from Savannah High School, Mr. Math Inc. Giving you game plans and teaching you stats and probability so you can use it in the real world and while dominating in chess. All right, last one, 1.37 divide complex numbers. You can go ahead and press pause if you wanna um, go ahead and copy the chart I made, blue, green, and yellow. Okay, so basically this represents um, real complex, and this is the number of zeros. So if I graph this, x squared minus one, it has a y-intercept of negative one, and this is a parabola. <laughs> That's not a negative one, let's try that again. Y-intercept of negative one, this is my parabola. Okay, and remember that the, the real here is how many times it touches the x-axis. And in this case, how many does it have? We have two. Okay, pay attention. The number of zeros is, um, let's use a different color. This two here tells you how many times it's gonna cross or how many quote unquote solutions we have. So that would be two. So what number can we write there? Two plus something equals two. Well, if you think about it, all of these are gonna be quadratic. So there's gonna be two zeros. Okay, so that means that number has to be zero. There are zero complex and I'll show you visually what that means, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and graph this one again. Let's graph x squared, okay? This is called the power function. It just doesn't have a y-intercept. If you had to write a number, it would be plus zero. So there's zero. And um, there's my graph. Okay, question. Um, how many times is it crossing the x-axis? Okay, it's, it's kind of a trick question, but we talked about this. I know it, you see that it touches the graph once, but we call that one a double root. It counts as double, right? Why? Because the answer is x equals zero and x equals zero, okay? So we have two reals. That means how many complex do we have? Zero. Okay, let's do the last one. This last graph here has a y-intercept of plus, that's a one, sorry. And your graph's gonna look like this. Okay, question. How many times does it cross the x-axis? Whoops, that's supposed to go over that. The answer in this case is zero. Okay, what does this mean? That means what number do I have to write in there? This one would be two, okay? So it's the same thing, real, complex, complex, um, real, and then the number of zeros. Just copy and paste it, should have done that. Okay, this is the number of zeros, number of zeros. Okay, what do you guys notice? Is it possible for this to have um, is it possible to um, have just like one real plus one complex? The answer is no. So here's the big idea. That's a star. Um, complex conjugates come in pairs. How many is a pair? There's two. And here, here I'm gonna drive it home right here. Okay, 
what is the conjugate? Well, if this is a plus, that means this one's going to be a minus. That's it. You just change the math operation. So if it tells you a minus bi, then the conjugate is a plus bi. If they give you a plus, you change it to a minus. Okay? That's it. So let's go ahead and try these really quickly, and then we're going to do a more advanced problem. Okay, this one is plus, so this one's going to be what? Minus. Simple as that, guys. This one is minus, you're going to change it to a what? Plus. This one is a plus, you change it to a minus. This one is a minus, you change it to a plus. Okay, this one looks tricky, but if you notice what I've done there, I have the real and I have the complex, so you can put a zero there. That one is a minus, so you'll change it to a plus. And everything else is the same. So these are the conjugate pairs. See, it's exactly the same. The only thing that's changed is what? The math operation. Okay. All right, let's do a more complex problem. Let's do this one. It says simplify um, 5i over 3 plus 2i. Okay, so if you look back at our vocab, we're going to have to do something called RTD. And RTD is basically we can't have i there. We rationalize the denominator. So to do that, we just need to find its conjugate. So let's just make this super obvious. What is the conjugate? What did we just do there? Well, if this is a plus, then this one has to be a minus. Yeah. And then everything is the same. Okay, now pay attention. So now, When you're doing rationalize the denominator, you're gonna have to um, always multiply a number times one, right? Four times one, four. Pi times one, pi. Um, sine of three pi over two, you don't know what that is, but it's the same. <laughs> sine of three pi over two, you could evaluate and get a number, but my point is if you multiply any number times one, it doesn't change. So that's the same thing here in math here. Okay, what does this mean? Okay. Okay, this means we need to multiply this numerator here and this denominator. Okay. To multiply the denominator, if you recognize what we have to do in this work here, is we're going to have to use the box method. So let's go ahead and multiply the blue there. Do it over here. So I have 3 plus 2i, 3 minus 2i. What you're going to see is the i's disappear. That is the whole point. Multiply 9, negative 6i, 6i, and negative 4i squared. Okay, here's a nice thing. Negative 6 and positive 6 equals 0. It goes away. We learned that pirates say i equals square root of negative 1, which helps us figure out that i squared equals negative 1. So... Everything in blue, if you think about this, this will just become 9 and a positive 4. Which would give us 13. In the green, we're going to have to distribute this 5i. So that will become 15i minus 15 i squared 
And of course, we just did it. I squared equals negative 1. So that is 15, negative 15 times negative 1. This will give us 15i plus, that becomes plus, yeah? Plus 15 um, over 13. See that? <sighs> okay, that becomes 15i and then negative 10i squared. Okay, so that is negative 10 times negative 1. That will give me um, positive 10. Okay, now if you wanted to separate this, you can do a couple of things. Um, 15i plus 13 and 10 plus 10 over 13 because they have a common denominator and you can combine them right and why am i doing this so that i do the real first and then the uh, complex so that would become no i and then the one that has an i make sense and that's our answer so to simplify that problem, you're going to look at the denominator, look at its conjugate, and then um, go ahead and multiply. All right. For questions 35 to 37, go ahead and skip one of these. Let's go ahead and tackle this one right here. I'm going to have to multiply by its conjugate. Remember, if this is a plus, then this one's going to be a minus. And I have to do it both top and bottom. So let's go ahead and get this one in green. Three plus i and three minus i. So we're going to multiply then add nine, negative three i, positive 3i and negative i squared. Positive 3i and negative 3i equals 0 and i squared equals negative 1. So that'll become 1. So 9 plus 1 in green this will give me in the denominator a 10. Okay, here I'm going to distribute 5 times 3 is 15 and 5 times negative i gives me negative 5i. Alright, they both have a denominator of 10. <clears throat> and in this problem you can simplify. So 5 times 3, 5 times 2, 5 times 1 times i, and I'll show you why I did that, and then 5 times 2. And you'll see that 5 divided by 5 is 1, same thing over here. So you're left with 3 halves minus i, or 1 half, you can do 1 half i is fine, or you can do i over 2. And that's our answer. Let's take a look at number 36. <clears throat> okay. 36, you're going to need a math operation in front. What is that? That's going to be a 0 plus i. Now, what is its conjugate? Pay attention. Um, I don't really want to do 0 minus 2i. You could, but the conjugate there is just going to be a minus, and then it's just 2i. You'll recognize if you do the zero in front and you can go ahead and um, use the box method, um, you'll get the same answer. So let's do the denominator. What did I just tell you? You didn't have to. <laughs> um, let, me, let me show you, I'll just do it super fast. Let's just say you want to put a zero, you don't have to. But it's the same answer. 
multiply zero, zero times anything zero, zero times anything zero, and then negative four i squared. That becomes a negative one. Negative four times negative one is four. So the answer is four for the denominator. And that would make sense because if, let's just say I don't have it, um, this just moves down. Magic. So 2i times negative 2i gives you negative 4i squared. Does that make sense? And it's the same math as I did over here. So that's what I'm trying to tell you. You don't need the zero. Does that make sense? But I did it over here on the left side with the blue is because I wanted to show you how to find the conjugate. Okay, this one looks a little bit weird, but you're gonna you can distribute backwards. Okay, so seven times negative um, two i is negative fourteen i, and that'll become plus um, twenty six i squared. And we know that this is negative one, so twenty six times negative one gives me negative twenty six. negative 26 divided by 4. And if you want to simplify that, we can break them up the fractions first. Negative 14 um, over 4i minus 26 over 4. Did you notice they both have a denominator of 4 there? And let's just break them up to prime factor. So this will become um, negative um, 7 times 2 over 2 times 2i minus 2 times 13 over 2 times 2. And uh, let's go ahead and just cancel some things out here. And I get negative, I'm going to put it second over here because that's the complex part. And the one without the i is the real part. Okay. And then same thing over here for number 37. To help you find this conjugate, I'm just going to put a zero here. And that's just to show you the conjugate is just going to be minus. And the best one is just to write 3i. That's it. The conjugate of three positive three i is negative three i. And then all you have to do for this problem is uh, multiply across. And this one you're gonna have to distribute. So that's gonna give us six times negative three i is negative 18 i. Negative five times negative three is positive 15 and that becomes i squared. 3i times negative 3i becomes negative 9i squared. Big idea is that becomes negative 1. That becomes negative 1. So negative 18 plus 15 times negative 1 and negative 9 times negative 1. So this will give us... Um, do 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 do! I made a mistake. Did you see that? I caught it. Okay, so negative eighteen i minus fifteen over positive nine, and then I'll just break them up into factors. Or sorry, we'll split the fraction. So negative eighteen over nine i, and negative fifteen over nine. Real then complex, and you're like, what math operation goes in between them? Um, it's going to be a negative. Does that make sense? Or whatever the whole expression is equal to. So um, this is 5 times 3, 3 times 3. This is a negative because negative divided by positive is negative. 9 times 2 and 9 times 1. I. So 3s will cancel and your 9s will cancel. You're left with negative 5 thirds minus... 2i. Alright, let's double check our answers just to make sure. Uh, 3 halves minus 1 half i minus 13 over 2 minus 7 half i. 
negative 5 thirds minus 2i. That's it, guys. And those you can skip, okay? So that's complex numbers. Plus a u. Shout out to Miss Aang for being the best math teacher that there is. And math is easy.